this coral. All right, zoom in. That's fantastic. Yeah, I think Steve's asking if we see a Swiftia in the background there. I think maybe. Okay. One more that we have the lasers just over right now. Mm-hmm. Gotcha. Cool. Yeah, consensus seems to be likely mm -hmm. Swiftia. Is this a maximum zoom, by the way? It is. Okay, awesome. Thank you so much. <laughs> just, you know, gotta ask. <laughs> oh, yeah. Thank you for the zoom. We'll get ready to get ready to move on a little bit further. Okay. Um, thank you, Amber. Thank you. Cool. Yeah, so we are on uh, what we have, uh, what is lovingly termed uh, unnamed seamount number 17, which uh, mm -hmm. will receive a uh, formal name at some point in the future. Uh, uh, and uh, this is uh, seamount located in uh, toward the northwestern edge of Papahanaumokuakea Marine National Monument. And uh, this is the first time that we have visited this uh, this seamount. Yes, it is. It's very interesting. We only just mapped it uh, in the last approximately 36, 48 hours. So a lot of brand new data that we've been able to get on this place. Yep, gathering a lot of data. The landscape over here, as we talked about in our last watch um, this past evening, it's so dramatic. And you mentioned it's chaotic too, right, Dr. Mm -hmm. Gall? And then you're also saying that it could be because of a flank? Yeah, a lot of the morphology along this, this dive site, along this, this whole corner of the seamount, mm -hmm. it's it sort of has the scoop shape and it's very steep. So um, it, it looks like... Uh, uh, some of the polys or the cliffs that you can yeah. see on uh, some of the Hawaiian islands yeah. uh, over water and um, just may have been an unstable side of the volcano that collapsed mm -hmm. at some point. And uh, we don't have high risk bathymetry a little bit further east of this that we might be able to uh, see some uh, debris like morphology like you can north of Oahu mm -hmm. uh, on the seafloor. But um, yeah, it definitely looks like there was some sort of wasting event. Yeah. Um, and maybe that'll help us understand a little bit. Uh, more, you know, some of this footage may help us better understand mm -hmm. some of those uh, geo formation processes. And uh, if you're unfamiliar with what I mean by uh, geo, this is a, uh, a class of seamount that has a flat top and some very steep sides. And uh, uh, they're um, pretty distinct uh, uh, when they show up in uh, map data. And they, they probably build up like a normal shield volcano over time, but then you just get these uh, you know, you, you, you may end up uh, uh, having some collapses that help uh, sort of accentuate that uh, bathymetry, that give it that, those uh, uh, very steep sides. Yeah. And kind of eyeballing the, the manganese crust, uh, crusts on uh, the, the rocks that we're seeing here, both um, mm -hmm. things that look like uh, 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 some tallest, some loose rock that's piled up, and as well as things that appear to be in place. Mm -hmm. Looks like there's a everything's covered in manganese crust here, so this would be something that would have happened a very long time ago, like probably tens of millions of years ago. Wow. You know, we'll, we'll confirm that once we get the rocks on board and take mm -hmm. a look at the actual uh, uh, thickness of these crusts. Once uh, uh, we can take a look at the interiors mm -hmm. of these rocks, but um, that's that's just kind of me trying to do a little drive-by <laughs> geology right now. 
uh, and uh, try to make some estimates on that. Wonderful, yeah. Thank you for that. Thank you for all of that context. I sure. mean, you know, seeing all of these beautiful Pohaku, all of these rocks, and just seeing the dual bodies down there, Atalanta and then Hercules um, exploring the ocean, it really reminds me that at the surface, we only see that. I mean, we, from the surface of the water, we just see the Mwana Nuiya Kea, just the vast blue. But when we dive down deeper, and then having all of your knowledge too, all of your Ike, Dr. Val, it really helps paint a larger picture of what's below our ocean, what's, you know, all of these giant Mauna Kai, these giant sea mounds, and these peaks and pullies um, within our ocean. Mm -hmm. So it's amazing, quite amazing. And to see all the life down here, the biodiversity, all of these beautiful species of corals, colors that are so vibrant, yet it's such a cold, um, you know, oh, wow. cold Should environment. Get star. Yeah, cold, very dark. <laughs> oh, it's, it's something to behold. It is such a treat to be able to do this kind of work. Yeah, this is amazing. We've got more Arita Gorges. Wow. Um, oh, and uh, uh, that's a Gorge yeah. we haven't seen, and some Coralids and Pseudoanthemastis. Oh, another Walteria. I was about to ask too, if that was a Walteria. Yeah. Wow. Hey, look at me learning bio. You're doing amazing. <laughs> you could become a biologist. <laughs> I'm not that good at biology. <laughs> I mean, what it is is you get a you get an you get a guide in front of you, and eventually, after time, you just memorize things. So you're doing True. exactly it. A little bit of an immersion course, <laughs> literally. <laughs> yes, this is this is a crash course. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Wow. I never make it as a biologist. I never remember anything. <laughs> <laughs> Probably heard all these coral names, you know, <laughs> thousands of times in my camp. <laughs> yeah. Uh, you're, uh, hey, everybody's got their occupied. talent. <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness. Everybody has their talents. <laughs> yeah, and that's what I enjoy about this team is all the different talents that we have. Robert, I mix up the names of dear friends. So yeah. <laughs> barely remember my own name sometimes. <laughs> right. <laughs> but then I remember, like, obscure part numbers for electronic <laughs> components. <laughs> hey, that comes in handy. <laughs> That's telling, yeah. I know way too many uh, geochemical acronyms, so <laughs> we're right there with you. Wow, this is pretty amazing to be seeing. But Stunning, yeah. Absolutely stunning. Some of these uh, hemicorallia are getting quite large. Yeah, they can actually. They can get um, incredibly they can get large. Incredibly large. Yes. And one thing I'm noticing too, though, is um, sort of unlike unlike the which one was that King George Seamount, there is some variability in size here. Mm. Not. Not a lot, but there there is um, some varied sizes. Oh, what is another one of your primnoids? Yeah, I was wondering if we could get a, a zoom on that, if yeah. possible. May you zoom in? Okay. Oh, that base. Yeah, actually, I was thinking that is that is not um, a primnoid. It's actually a bamboo. Oh wow! Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. I was having a hard time finding the nodes on the one below, um, and I think this might be another similar one. Um, but the base is what gave it away for me, and then the polyps look very distinct. Gotcha. Um, yeah, I would not have been able to make that. That's funny. I'm, not a I'm still looking for <laughs> nodes, but. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, looking at Atalanta Cam, it's uh, there's there's life wow. all over this rock. Yeah, yeah, this is pretty amazing. We've got a lot of 
we've got several paracorsia colonies among this, all with the uh, girdle stars and corallids um, against it. This is amazing. Is this full zim? I think a little bit more. <laughs> That's All right, the, oh, current, the, the currents come at us from yeah. the okay. side here, and yeah. it's just... All good. It's hard to hold position. No, this yeah. is amazing. Thank you. Understood. Wow. Oh, you can see, see the analysis. steps going across the screen. Right? Yeah. What were you pointing out, It's now? a very large anthemastus, or pseudoanthemastus. Mm, mm -hmm. Wow. And it just keeps going. Wow. Incredible. And for our nice. viewers in satellite three, um, I went and put the her oh, and you camera so you can see kind of how sheer this face is. Yeah. You can see the iridogorgias are bent over with the current on top, too. That's pretty amazing. That's pretty telling, too. And actually, you can see... You can see it in the background, too. The iridogorgias are going this way, and the corals are also all facing that direction, too. Yeah, mm -hmm. that gives you a good that's current indicator. Far. Oh, I like... That's... Yeah. Yeah, so wow, the currents are, spinning. like, pretty variable. You know, you come around a point, and then you get slapped in the face with it, and, mm -hmm. and then you get behind the rock, and it's calm. So... In fact, I'm intentionally not, zooming on. It's not again. like you know, predominantly coming at you from one side. Okay. Yeah, because it looks like with the current direction of uh, the current that we're in right now, that that could hamper uh, us trying to get over to the original waypoint three. So, are yeah. we headed toward the new waypoint three? Uh, yes. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Good. I think that'll be. I mean, it's not reasonable. It's not killing us here we're doing all right but yeah okay we're, yeah but i think, I think broadside too you can see that one coral in the background right there, like, yeah. Yeah. yeah wiggling yeah. around yeah, yeah that's a pretty official, strong current official word is we're gonna scrap that old sounds good yeah. sounds good to me I, I think we're getting plenty of uh, uh geological information to uh to make me and some other folks happy so <laughs> yeah would it be possible to zoom on on this yellow coral Yeah, it might be kind of a challenge to get close okay. to it, but you can zoom in. Okay, zooming. Yeah, this is kind of a challenging spot here. Right. right. And there's too many corals. There's nowhere to <laughs> land without getting right, yeah. in the stuff. Is that a black coral? Um, I don't think it is. I don't believe it's a black coral. It's um, I think it's a... Uh, it's not stiff, though. It's really blowing around in the wind. Right, yeah. yeah. Yeah, it's pretty amazing. Um, I think, it, yeah, I think it's in a Canthagorgid. Okay. Um, Asako's thinking similarly. Oh, awesome. And yeah. Steve. All right. We, uh, majority oh, was at the biologist. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's a... Uh, you know, there's a couple. And Chris. <laughs> there's a couple attacks out there that do look very similar, unless you can get a pretty good view of the the branching and the gotcha. and, um it, well, it seems we have uh, four biologists in agreement right now, so uh, wonderful. It sounds like a pretty yeah. solid ID. Awesome. <laughs> yeah, this is amazing, and you can see some of the stalks, the old stalks of corals too, and these corallids are just stunning. So another thing I'm seeing here okay. on the manganese Here's crusts. You know. Oh, awesome, yeah. Uh, you can see some polishing and some striations on some portions of the manganese crust coating the rocks. And uh, uh, what I was told last year when talking with uh, some of our USGS colleagues who work on manganese crusts is that that, uh, that shininess, the striations can develop in response to uh, currents that polish them, mm -hmm. which is uh, uh, pretty consistent with the conditions we're looking at here. Oh, oh my wow. goodness, yeah. <laughs> Remember when wow. we were talking about difficult current locations to... <laughs> it's, it's, it's great for the corals. <laughs> yes, yes it is. That is stunning. You can see the marine snow flying uh, off to mm -hmm. the side too. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah, we're, we're staying pretty 
we're, we're moving very little, so that's pretty, uh, very quick. Yeah, it's substantial. Anyone who uh, spends more time in ROVs than I do have an idea of how quickly that snow is moving past? Yeah, it's hard to, hard to do. Mm -hmm. The easiest way to find out what the current, the speed is to just stop driving and just go with it. Mm -hmm. We yeah. don't want to do that. Oh, right. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Probably not the best idea right here. <laughs> right. Man, it's just oh, like wow. a wall right here. And, and that what's interesting, too, is that the corals are on the other side of that wall as well. That's wild. I think, uh, looking at the morphology of the substrate here, this looks like uh, possibly, you know, I'm not 100% right, sure, can but we zoom in? it looks possibly like uh, a dike that has been more resistant over time, whereas uh, what it intruded into seems to have uh, fallen away. So it's just kind of uh, just sticking out around here and... Uh, making a great home for uh, uh, this, this little ecosystem. Yeah, this is wonderful. This little community. Mm -hmm. Vibrant community, for Very sure. Very vibrant, Incredible. yeah. Dr. Val, is it sort of like uh, how the chimney will remain standing even after a house has kind of uh, maybe fallen away or another structure? Is, that, is it similar to uh, what's maybe. happening with this dike? Yeah, for whatever reason, this is uh, whatever intruded there is a little bit more resistant to, uh, you know, the forces of change that have that the seamount has seen and is continuing to see, and it's uh, sticking around a little longer. Wow. Yeah, I'd never thought of it that way, but I, I, that's that's an interesting uh, metaphor. Well, okay, fine, simile. <laughs> <laughs> amazing yeah that's wow. awesome yeah there's so much coral yeah the density is incredible mm -hmm. but this have you guys done eDNA for an area like this yeah I think we have actually done eDNA recently okay, cool. Oh my goodness, yes. This is amazing. Look at some of these corals are just so densely packed in here. They're thriving too. Absolutely, and you can see the, the, the oh, and there was a little cup coral too. Um, and a lot of these corals seem to have some anemones on them as well, some small, um, yeah. Okay, great, yes. And I think uh, as Steve just said that that was a Kleptrophera in the background, too. <laughs> mm -hmm. Wow, this is amazing. Yeah, he, he's wishing for a telestrator, too, at this point. <laughs> oh, there's some more cup corals. Mm -hmm. There's one more. Yeah, wow. I, I, I hear you. It's, uh, the telestrator is very helpful uh, in the control van because it uh, makes it much easier for uh, back row to point out um, <clears throat> interesting sample or zoom targets uh, without having to get out a giant pointy stick or anything. <laughs> and since we're looking at monitors, uh, uh, laser pointers don't work very well. So, telestrator it is. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Yeah, that's the, the technique has changed over time because we used to have CRT monitors in here way back in the day. <laughs> and you couldn't use a laser pointer because it would reflect off the glass and like Ooh. blind you. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, so that's not you good. would use a stick. And then, uh, and then we got LCD monitors. And LCD monitors don't work with laser pointers because it just absorbs the light from the laser pointer. You yeah. You can see it. And you don't want to use a stick on an LCD display because you destroy it, right? Yeah. <laughs> yep. Especially Poke if you're it. trying to point and then the ship <laughs> takes a funny roll. <laughs> oh, that would be bad news. <laughs> the CRT monitors used to be affected by the Earth's magnetic field. Wow. And they would get oh, all wow. the colors would get all distorted. Oh, my goodness. And we'd have to get up and degauss them with a, with a magnet. Oh, wow. <laughs> yeah, I remember so you that. would see it when the ship would change heading. 
Oh wow. As the ship would change heading, the, the colors would shift on the screen and get Oh my crazy. gosh. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Oh, this is awesome. Sako, I never thought I would see see you write something like that. <laughs> she, she's like, it's too many corals on one screen. It is incredibly <laughs> it's uh <laughs> I'm just like, oh, what's this? And then my brain starts processing, and then I'm like, oh, what's this? And then my brain, and it forgets about the other coral that oh, I was no. trying to think about. I'm like, oh my goodness. I, it sounds like the short team may be having the same problem. <laughs> it's a good problem to have, but yeah, yeah it's just a okay, little distracting. Yeah. <laughs> speaks, speaks to the abundance of the area. It really, it really does. does. I mean, look at this. This is. I mean, look at this uh, wide shot. Yeah. Astounding. You know, it's like, how do we, uh, having a few of, um, ship to shore interactions earlier with high school students it's like how do we explain yeah. this even though they can come with us on this journey being in the control van definitely takes it to another level it's i mean it's the reality that we're living on board um we're seeing these things and to think that these rovs are below us um, and we're top side of it and so just trying to really articulate these experiences uh to high school students <laughs> yeah. which may not be the most um receptive age <laughs> but um what high school yeah. <laughs> yeah. don't blame them it's it's, yeah. it's tiring being a teenager it is yeah oh absolutely and school starts way too early for, for those brains yeah <laughs> so it's like mm -hmm. you want to take them with you on this journey to see all, all right. these amazing things and it's like how do we spark that interest especially if some of our students around the world don't have access to the ocean. Right. Yeah. They don't have access to any body of water that they can, you know, cultivate this relationship, um, you know, with the ocean, with a, a river, a stream, a lake, and so it's like I really do see that, you know, more and more as we do these interactions with Helmana or students. Wow. It's like how do we help inspire that, mm -hmm. even though they may not have access to the ocean. Yeah. Yeah, and that's the nice thing about telepresence. It's not quite the same, but we can at least try to deliver all of this uh, mm -hmm. in near real time yeah. to our audience. And I hope that I hope we do inspire some folks. Definitely, we, we need all we need all the marine scientists we can get in, in this day and age. Mm -hmm. um, we actually have an ROV related question, Robert. Um, it's one of our viewers are asking if the ROV is equipped with a hydrophone. Uh, Herc does not have. Well, none of our ROVs have a hydrophone fixed to them. Mm -hmm. um, Herc is a hydraulic ROV, so it has a, a big hydraulic motor that runs continuously and makes a lot of noise. <laughs> it's really loud, so you can't really hear anything but the hydraulic motor if you had a hydrophone on there. Mm -hmm. We have taken some uh, remote hydrophones that self-contained, and we've deployed those near... Uh, some methane seeps and i know we used one for an erupting volcano that we were looking at that's cool and uh wow so then the rov move off and record that and so with the volcano it was with uh, the jason rov and it's uh, electric and can run silent oh, wow and then another viewer is actually asking how does the slurp work underwater the what the slurp the slurp ah. <laughs> <laughs> it, it sort of looks like a turbocharger <laughs> if you look at the pump it's uh what, what do they get yeah, so they, they run a yeah. pump with that and uh they, yeah. you can still create a little bit of a vacuum that way like a snail mm -hmm. shell kind of design oh. And, uh, yeah, so it's moving water through it. Getting a little tangled up in those corals on this side. So, yeah, it's pretty similar to so what? just a regular just old back. We're getting a little uh, tangled just with the corals right. over there. On your star yeah, board. I'm also like up against that wall and I can't move away from it. <laughs> mm. Do you need to reposition at all? We're getting pretty strong current blowing us from the side you can see it whipping across yeah. Yeah. and i think we're getting to the top of this so it's like even stronger okay um yeah so I, get my, I can turn into it and drive harder but now we're up against this wall and it's yeah okay if you need to reposition to get away from the wall uh do whatever you need to do well 
we just, you know, now we're at the top of this feature, right. and we're yeah. just like up in the wind, right? Yeah, yeah. It's, like, you can see it's really strong Climbing here. the tower and up in the wind. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I'm not able to move over any. Okay. And our hydraulics is falling on its face, which it does when it's when you come in the strong current and try and drive hard. Mm, okay. It has a very <laughs> annoying habit of deciding to not run anymore. Gotcha. <coughs> so yeah, I'm stalled out. Okay. Atalanta <laughs> is kind of. Well, I don't know if it'll make a difference, but we're kind of moving forward without Atlanta, so we'll see. We okay. From there. Yeah, you can yeah. see again that current and that um, aridic Yeah, yeah, yeah I've like there. totally I lost here. it here. So yeah. Okay. I can't hold position. I can't drive. Okay. Yeah, we're kind of blowing in the wind now. <laughs> well, well, we'll get it sorted. No worries. <laughs> Yeah, with that slurp question, it's uh, it's it's ultimately a very similar principle to how like your vacuum cleaner works, where mm -hmm. you're just generating suction. It's just um, you know, if if you think of air kind of as a very uh, extraordinarily thin fluid, um, we're just working with a with a more viscous, uh, thicker fluid with the water. So um, yeah, you uh, move enough water fast enough in a concentrated area and you can uh, generate some suction, uh, which will uh, uh, let us sample some of these, uh, uh, some specimens. Mm. Wow, so, that is thank you. Mahalo. So an interesting thing about the, the pump is that it has to have a head on it, mm -hmm. which means it has to blow into a restriction or it just won't move any water at all. Like, so we have a length of kind of a smaller diameter hose than the intake on the, on the output of the pump. Okay. And without that, it just doesn't move any water. Wow. I don't know the physics of that, but it's a fact. <laughs> oh, wow. Hey, if it works, it works. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Which, that had been a head scratcher for a long time, because you'd think, like, you want no restriction there. But right, yeah. It just doesn't work. Huh. Ooh, this current. Um, yeah, I'm kind of thinking on our, our next move, rather than trying to co keep coming along this ridge, which is kind of into that current direction, we can start spin around here. Start making our way up slope. Sounds like a good plan. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> If you are just tuning in, we are on board the exploration vessel Nautilus in Papahanaumokuakea Marine National Monument. Uh, just under 2,000 meters of depth. We have strong currents and both um, Hercules and Atalanta are deployed right now. Uh, we are on a... Uh, what direction you think about going? Um, Basically, rather than keeping coming along this ridge like we've been doing, we can just start heading okay. up the slope. I mean, that's kind of what we were doing. Well, yeah, that was coming coming more in like a long contour. Yeah, was, we're yeah. still broadside to the current. Yeah, so. yeah. I don't really know if there's going to be a great way to get up that way. Uh, it might deviate us, but uh, if we can make the current work for us a little bit um, until it hopefully <laughs> gets a little better, um, I, uh, that's fine with me. Okay. We may not have a choice. Yeah. <laughs> Bridge now. Could we move to five meters at bearing two eight five? Perfect, thank you. You're right in front of a wall. You see that? On your raft? Yeah. 
So, yeah, I don't know what's going on right now. It's really blowing us over here, the current. Well, see, I got wall behind yeah, me. Yeah, I, I know. nothing in front of me, and I got wall behind me. So, and I'm facing that direction. So. Yeah. So. There we go. Oh. Uh, like on the other side of the little ridge there? Yeah, yeah I gotta, uh, you gotta come up. I was wondering. I was wondering what was going on. <laughs> oh yeah, you're pulling. I'm gonna come up a little bit. Well, yeah, well don't don't jerk it off of the point. Yeah. Then I won't know what I'm doing. I'm coming up. I'm coming up. Okay. So don't. It's, it's, it's doing it by itself. So it spun around. You're good. Okay. So there was a local peak right there. Yeah. That's and that's what we yeah. were coming up, and that's why we were way out in the breeze. Smart cut. Which you don't see on the map there. Nope. Sure don't. Hopefully this next move is going to get us moving this All way. Right. Well, I'm going to try and just drive south. Don't stretch it out too far. No. I need to... I ain't yeah. touching it. I'll go down whenever you need me to. Yeah, well, I'm stuck at the end of the line. Yeah, to our live viewers, if you're just joining us, um, <clears throat> we are uh, on Expedition NA 154 in Papahanao Mukuakea Marine National Monument. We are diving on a previously unmapped and unexplored seamount known as, uh, uh, currently, uh, as uh, unnamed seamount number 17, and it will receive a proper name in the future. Um, we're working on repositioning the vehicles right now uh, to uh, uh, better accommodate some strong currents that we're dealing with uh, along the side of the seamount right now. So um, just give us a little bit of time here and we'll get things uh, squared away and then uh, continue our, uh, our survey. Yeah, I can't do anything. Yes, unfortunately, some of the locations where corals do best are locations where ROVs kind of struggle. Um, they're they're very broad, and they can get pushed around by that current. Mm -hmm. um, and then you know you've got the issue where um, you can't you can't focus on a. It, it makes it more difficult 
to get really good um, zooms and, and um, you know, that, that imagery, but it's... Yeah, uh, we just can't hold our position. Right, so. that's, that's yeah. it. That's, that's <laughs> the that thing That I was seems for. to be the nature of science, always. You're always <laughs> trying to find rocks and mud and <laughs> yeah, <laughs> sand and rocks. And, <laughs> <laughs> and we just love picking things up <laughs> and putting them into Herc's pockets. Well, I mean, you always find the, the hardest place to find something. <laughs> it's a talent, isn't it? <laughs> Yeah, we, we appreciate uh, your, uh, your your skill and your patience, Robert, uh, dealing with the site that we picked. <laughs> yeah, I'm not able to make any headway at Okay. All. So if I move this kind of up this way along the slope to give you more tether, do you think you'll yeah, be able to make more maybe. movement? Maybe. All right. Okay. I'll use that or I'll get blown further up that way. <laughs> we'll see. Bridge now. You can see I'm at the end of the tether. Yeah. I can't. I yeah. can't do anything. Could we please move two zero meters at bearing three one zero? Thank you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I was just thinking of the number of different groups of corals we just saw, I think. We saw Hemichralliums, Chrysogorgia, Aridogorgia, Rodanaridogorgia. There were two distinct bamboos, um, Paragorgids, Acanthogorgids. Paraclad, Kalachop. Chloranthomastis, what was that? Paracle oh, right, the Paracletophora primnoids. Okay, we've got 10. We also had those um, Cup corals. squat lobsters and there were burl stars. Basket uh, stars. Yep, basket stars. There was a brazingid. Are we counting, we're counting all organisms? So yeah, can you zoom out? Uh, What's the Walteria overall sponge, thing? Oh my god, the Walteria like, um, and that, um, that base um, family sponge that starts with the C. Uh, yeah, it's like, <laughs> so the <laughs> current's all being kind of channeled in there. It's like, yeah, yeah that's, which is yeah. great for the coral. So we got, we're at 16. Um, do you count cup corals yet? Yeah, let's, cu yeah, let's count that, yeah. 17. <laughs> um, yeah. We got pericorations, yeah. we got pericorations. In the canyon. Oh, I've forgotten the plexorid. Oh, okay. That's 18. We got. Um, That's unbelievable. More primnodes. Um, we got. 19. Um, Farid species. A what species? Farid oh, glass sponge. Oh, yeah. Um, I don't think I counted that. The one that looked like. Um, yeah, like or the one that was, I guess, collected earlier. Um, oh, the okay. The Faraday yeah. target piece. That's amazing. Um, yeah. Yeah, a bunch of Chrysogorgia, Yeah. Yeah. So what number are we at? We were at 19. 19, 19 different um, families and genera that we that we that we observed. That's a in, lot. In our watch, which <laughs> has lasted an hour. <laughs> we saw some sea cucumbers too. At least one. Oh. <laughs> I missed it. I missed <laughs> it too. Oh shucks. <laughs> That is mm -hmm. Yeah, that looks like the most exposed spot you could possibly get to right there, right? Yeah. Out on the end of that that peak. Yeah. And this is one of the uh, challenges with exploring. Uh, areas that are brand new to us. We don't always know what we're going to find and sometimes well, I mean, we find a lot of current. It's consistent with the with the map there, right? Like that's like a, yeah. a peninsula jutting right. out there. It's yeah. Like the most yeah. exposed at the, in a canyon kind of thing. And the water's just coming in at the right direction. Or wrong. Yeah. Right for corals. Yeah. <laughs>
Yeah, not so much for us. Yeah, I'm just going further up. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's been a pretty amazing start to the to our day in this uh, this eight. I'm to just four gonna line. let the heading go. Um, We're just sucking up all our power trying to hold the heading. I'll just back up. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, just uh, so amazing what you can see in some of these unexplored locations in the Papanamakuakea Marine National Monument. It's, uh, it's always amazing to get the opportunity to come out here and just uh, mm -hmm. be amazed. Um, you know, a lot of my research comes from the perspective of looking at locations that have already been uh, um, exploited. Um, and so it's really pretty amazing for me to see some of these locations that are just, you know, looking like they're untouched. Um, mm -hmm. You know, it's, uh, um, it's pretty amazing. Um, and it's also really fun to see the corals um, uh, on their boulders and, and looking over there, you know, following some of the, the concepts that, you know, we see. Well, that's an interesting swimming organism. Yeah, this little one. Yeah. Is that a worm? Worm? It also reminds me of the tumbling well, Yeah, snail. it does, doesn't it? <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it definitely does. Mm -hmm. A smaller one. Yeah. Oh, he's bad. Yeah. I think uh, Kukui is still catching up on the uh, the data logging from such a diverse and <laughs> abundant site over here, tip tapping away. Oh goodness, it's uh, as I was talking to the, the the science chat earlier. What what a dilemma to have. What, yeah. You know. Having having too many too many corals and sponges and you know I didn't even focus on the crabs I saw a couple of them that were there that I usually would have double checked my initial identification of and um, I didn't didn't even get a chance but it's uh, pretty amazing you know to see and and of course those those crabs and pearl stars and basket stars are also um, they're also taking advantage of the varied current um, brought on by the the boulders and the, the the actual ridge itself, but also getting up above the sea floor on top of the corals. Um, it's so important for a lot of these organisms to be up in the coral or sorry, up in the current, which can, for several, look like they are up in the cor in the coral, but um, it's so important because it's a way to get uh, food, it's a way, you know, to um, as well as to move around. It's important to get your any. Um, yeah, it's it's important for recruitment as well. It's really it's always it's so important. These uh, currents are. so important for life in the deep sea. Mm -hmm. so. Yeah. 
And a lot of those, uh, a lot of Crested Gorchas typically have a, a particular squat lobster with them. Um, very, very thin arms and light pink. Now I'm not making any headway. I am holding position. I was gonna say, has the, I mean, it looks like it's not all streaming in one direction now. Maybe What's that? the current? Uh, or is it still we're, going? We're with it now. It's coming over the top. Okay. okay. We're just, you know, we're blowing in the wind up that way. Yeah, okay. So I'm trying to back up and it's yeah. just not happening. So the vehicle doesn't go backwards nearly as good as it goes forward. Yeah. But I can't spin around because there's no slack in the tether. You know, we're, you can see yeah. in this view, we're just no, at I the end of the that. leash, just flopping in the wind, you know? I mean, I wonder if we drop down in here a little bit, if the current Yeah, if we could stay better. next to the rocks, then we'll yeah. be okay. But what, see, we came down to the point and came around the point, right? As yeah. soon as we came around the point, we're like exposed yeah. and, yeah, we came to the top and at the nose. It's like the strongest current. So if we could get down into the rocks, like if you ever do drift diving, scuba diving, you can, if you stay close to the bottom and hide behind the rocks, you can get, escape the current. But yeah. if yeah. you're just up in the breeze, like there's nothing to do. That sounds like a good plan of action. Let's, let's try to get out of the worst of this. Yeah. You know, if you, you zoom out and look at the big picture, you have this thing jetting out. We're right on the nose of it. Mm -hmm. and just came around the corner, right? Yep. Yeah, absolutely. Try to get him to keep moving that way. Bridge now. Could we move uh, two five meters at bearing three, four, five? Yeah, maybe if we get on the other side of Thank that, you. the little valley there, right? Away from the nose and back onto yeah. the slope. Yeah, that's where we're heading. It looks like I can do that too. No. Yep. In retrospect, maybe insisting on going up this part of the uh, the seamount side wasn't the best idea, but we didn't know this coming well, into it. <laughs> it's it my is fault. If you're trying to see corals, it's exactly where you want to be. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's my fault, literally and figuratively, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> is this a fault plane? That I think, we're I think everyone who was making that decision was very excited about this decision. So. Probably. It was a group. I think decision. I was the most vocal about it, though. <laughs> yeah, I don't know what, you know, tidal currents, sometimes it's just the time of day you're there, too, right? right? Oh, true, oh, absolutely. yeah. It's one of the things that makes these systems so dynamic, is the fact that they can have tidal currents, as well as, um, as, well as all sorts of different interactions with the topography. It's mm -hmm. cool. It's cool. Cool, but challenging. Yes, absolutely. Okay, you want to try coming down and see if we can get down onto the rocks? Yep. Unfortunately, that does seem to be the intersection where a lot of cool science happens. Yep, very much so. <laughs> see bottom a little bit right on that. I got twice as much water under me as you got. Though. I know, I think I'm on a cliff face and you're in yeah. the open. Yeah, we're like, Atalanta's yeah. hovering right over that. Yeah, look, look on your sonar over there. 
Yeah. See where I'm at right below you. All right. Well, we just gotta move until we get to where we can deal with it. Mm -hmm. So Val, I was realizing that um, the v any new viewers who weren't on last night might not understand one of the reasons why you're so excited about this is that it looked like a bite mark, you know, that there was a, a bite taken out of the seamount. Yeah, uh, so, um, yeah, it looks like part of the skio uh, has a very clear sort of arcuate uh, uh, collapse feature on one of its flanks, and that's what we're uh, uh, that's what we're trying to stay on right now. Uh, unfortunately, uh, it, it looks like the, uh, the morphology of this portion of the seamount is not playing too nicely with the currents, so we're we're kind of struggle busting a little bit here. <laughs> but um, one of the one of the things that are really interesting about some of these uh, cliff forming or poly type structures. Is that um you coming towards me uh that what's that, that? Are you gonna come towards me yeah i'm gonna come towards you okay yeah, we that, got some uh, slack so take advantage of it yeah features that look like collapses these cliff formers um they can expose uh in some instances uh uh some of this the interior structure of uh, uh these seamounts so we, we can see some of the interior plumbing uh, in the form of uh, intrusive dikes. Uh, we can get a little bit of structural information from those. Mm -hmm. and, uh, uh, I just think that's kind of incredible footage to, to collect. And if, we, uh, if we're able to do any sort of uh, uh, image processing or photogrammetry or something later on with it, we can get um, you know an idea of how the rift zones are aligned, uh, maybe some ideas about uh, uh, how that plumbing system works and uh, how, how you build a volcano, how you construct a uh, geo structure. Okay, I'm gonna go down. I'm gonna okay. I think you're we're pretty right below yeah. me. Yeah. Exciting. You wanna try and get yeah. me in view? Yeah, so. But, uh, yeah, take the yeah, that's wrap right. out. That's I think now that I, so when I'm at the end of the leash, I can't, I don't have any slack to spin around and drive towards it. Backing up doesn't work because it's just not very efficient. Oh, so we got slack, I could come back at it. So I think we're, I think we're okay now. Other than we're on, uh, you know, the walls over here. Oh, wow. So we're going down slope off of the nose there. Yeah, welcome back, Dan. So Val, you can see we're pointed to the east. So I think we came off the other side of the the, 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 the nose. Mm -hmm. What do you call that when it, the point, like a peninsula or a, what do you call it? Uh, a like part, part of a ridge or, line, yeah. Or, so we're going down this other side of it. Okay. Yeah, it looks, it looks like it's a little calmer here maybe. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Let's, let's keep uh, on this side for a little while just to give her a break. Yeah. Um, yeah, but if you want to keep going to the west, we just got to come down here and then, you know, I assume we're going to get to the bottom of this pretty soon. Okay. And then it'll start coming up on the other side of it. Sounds great. This is amazing. Wow. Yeah. Unbelievable. Look at that diversity moving down this. Man, oh, everybody that? showed up to this party. They really did. They did. Yeah, I see the... Oh, that looks maybe like a slightly different sponge than the, the vase sponge that we were seeing earlier, but we've got the corallids and... I thought I saw wow. the Noah up there at um, some point. Another acanthric orchid down I'm there. I'm right up against right? the wall, too. Is that yellow? Yeah. Yeah, but we should be, yeah, we need to move yeah. westerly again. 
Mm -hmm. Bird. This is this is the west face of that point. That's amazing, and it's got a lot of similar taxa too, which is kind of very cool. Somewhat to be expected. Um, it looks like we're near the bottom of it too. Mm -hmm. Can we zoom in? Okay, zooming in. Looks like we've got a couple different sponges here. Yeah, we're, look, we're looking at like what? Four wow. at least different species mm -hmm. right in this little area? Yeah, it looks like we've got that Perean sponge. We've got a couple looking um, stalked, stalked Those sponges. Those possible Calophagus calif sponges again? It looks like yeah, it. Yeah, kind of. I thought it looked a little bit different. Yeah, yes. Yeah. The, potentially some of those. This is pretty amazing. It's beautiful. Yeah, we've got those corallids and well, that's a pretty oh, spectacular yeah. sponge. Yeah, I think that's another one of the euplectalids. Um, several euphoctalids, I think. This is stunning. Another pseudoanthomastis and Walteria. Wow. This is beautiful to come back to. It sure is, isn't it? <laughs> How'd the interactions go? Outstanding, yeah. Awesome. Outstanding. We're just in the, with Jake Bonney, ROV pilot, uh, Herc pilot, mm -hmm. uh, at University of Rhode Island, uh, where many of us were uh, back in the Inner Space Center back in March, mm -hmm. the start of the expedition season, and it's great to connect with uh, connect with that community. Oh yeah, for sure. Yeah. So, um, uh, science on shore, Chris. Chris Kelly just mentioned that we were seeing uh, Ferrea sponge frills, uh, Corbitellinae, and uh, a Psychocalyx species, as well as a Rosellid vase, which is pretty uh, pretty amazing to have that diversity all in one one area, mm -hmm. um, along with a lot of these corals. Could we get a zoom on this coral, if if possible, and if we're not already zoomed in? All, all the right, way. Max zoom is there. That's Max zoom. All right. Okay. Awesome. Thank you so much. We're kind How of are we doing away, on tether? Though. Actually, that looks like a red paragorchid with the yellow zoanthid on it. So okay. That's kind of hard to see. Wow, this is. you're right about that. Yeah, that's awesome. That is very cool. I'm actually not positive that I've seen many um, paragorges with soanthids like that. It's amazing. And you can see some of the, the old sponge stalks in the view as well. And that, um, that Brazinga curled around the other paragorchid. And we've got the hemicorallium down there. Looks like those sponges are encased in something as well. Oh, oh wow. that's a great that's shot. Beautiful. Hopefully, we can get a nose into the cliff here and hold still. We're still good. We got a little bit of space. That's all right. That's amazing. I'd probably stop right there. Such incredible diversity and such a yes. small patch of rock. This mm -hmm. is really... All right, awesome. It's working as an advantage and a disadvantage for us because <laughs> yeah. uh, uh, things are thriving here because of uh, the strong currents. 
but unfortunately it means uh, Herc and Atlanta are getting blown around. I thought you might be saying it's hard to know which one people are identifying when they're identifying it. So, oh my <laughs> goodness. So. Yeah, that's, yeah. that's geologist problems. <laughs> <laughs> What's interesting about the one that's in the center of the screen, so there is, appears, Virginia, is that right? There's two different corals? Yeah, are? so what you can see here is you can see, um, sorry, you can see the pleurogurt, no, no, that's the wrong one. Um, Oh, my brain. Well, you've got the uh, yellow zoanthid on top of the red um, paragorgid coral. And you can see that it's actually on the same um, stalk. stalk as the, the red paragorgids. Oh, wow. wow. Um, so the zoanthid is colonizing the same sort of, the same skeletal structure oh, as that's the paragorgid. Wild. And you can see how it's moving on that skeleton that's pretty amazing wait virginia so literally the it's the is it was it as yellow zoanthid was that the was that the right name uh yes so that's zoanthid becoming is part the, of it yeah zoanthid is this larger group of um corals and um so this is i think i'm not sure if it is the the pear zoanthid that also um colonizes bamboos but um there are these yellow corals and, and you can see like one of the key things is just how many like polyps they have, they look very distinct from the, the, um, you know, the octocoral right. with the eight. Um, and so it's, and they're much larger. Um, and it's, it's, uh, it's, it's pretty amazing to see that here. Yeah. And they're in the, they're literally coming in and kind of taking over the same physical structure, not just growing on top of. Correct. Yes. Wow. So it's, uh, in like a commensalism or, uh, a symbiotic or is it more parasitic you know um, i'm actually not certain i think it is i would i am assuming it is more parasitic oh chris uh chris kelly has uh an id for that parazoanthid um it is uh <laughs> oh man that name is something <laughs> impossible <I> to read <laughs> <laughs> Bulagumma yeah. zoanthus, oh, wow. Emilia, Emily Acar Acadiarium. Acadia. Ac wait, let me say it again. Bulagumma zoanthus, Emily Acadiarum. Whew. Wow. And, uh, Good job. <laughs> thank you, thank you. I probably got it wrong, but yeah, no, it's it's a beautiful, beautiful taxa. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Oh, wow. I didn't know that. That's amazing. That is. Um. Apparently, thingy was being used a lot on the previous watch. <laughs> That's what I'm laughing about. I'm not laughing at, at the, at yeah. the uh, taxa name. In a second. Yeah. Okay, we gotta get... Okay, more. great. Yeah, we can move on. Yeah, yeah that's pretty amazing. Apparently, um... Apparently that Paris Melanthid was named after um, someone's daughters. Oh, okay. Okay. Well, that's so awesome. Going down. Going down. Really moving like a long slope down a long slope here. Kukui, we're keeping you busy down there, aren't we? All these are <laughs> not really we, but uh, so much biodiversity and uh, Kukui, our data logger, helping us uh, just label and sort through all the all the different uh, species um, that we're seeing and. So is this more or less than the uh, hemichorallium dive as far as data logging is going? <laughs> <laughs> um, in terms of diversity, it's I think a little bit right. more diverse yeah. than the hemichorallium garden that we saw. But in terms of density, I think the hemichorallium garden yeah. is maybe still winning. But in terms of diversity, <laughs> yeah. this is definitely number one. Yeah. Either way, there's a lot of logging happening right now. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah, so um, thank yeah. you guys for shouting out everything you guys are seeing. And thank you, scientists on shore, for all your guys' identifications as well. Um, been using that in the event log as well. So thank you, guys. Yeah, yeah it's much we appreciated. We to go down still. It's a critical part of the, of the mission. Uh, Kukui is laying the foundation for science uh, to continue well after this dive is over and uh, really, really important work. So if you do hear someone typing furiously away, that's, uh, that's just Kukui doing the science, doing her thing. Oh, and, thank uh, you.
Also, Virginia and Val have been typing away as well. <laughs> so. Mostly in science chat. <laughs> plenty of typers. <laughs> We're getting uh, rolled a little bit up top here, but not too bad. Looks like we're getting away from the, the corals. We're up there towards the top, and now we're nearing the bottom of this. Yeah. Still 18 meters up from the bottom. But maybe we just ought to turn around and go to the other side. Which, uh, which way? You mean this way? Yeah, I just go that way. All right. Me, not you. You're already <laughs> going that way. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Are we good with that? Sounds good to me. Okay. So I want to go this way. I guess we got to the bottom anyway. Yeah, near it. to the other side of the ridge. Yeah. So we're gonna go just off in blue water here for a minute. To the other side. Catalino, Robert, and Zach doing an incredible job as always, navigating these ROVs safely through these currents, along these cliff edges. Uh, awesome, awesome work up there in the front row. I'm seeing something in the chat asking about fun facts working at sea. Does anybody have any uh, any fun facts they want to share about what we're doing? It's a good fun fact. Oh, there's so yeah, many. Thank you. It's like, how do you choose? Yeah. We do, uh, we don't just, one, one fun fact is we don't just see amazing uh, biodiversity and marine life at the seafloor with the ROVs, but uh, a lot of times, uh, especially at night when our lights are shining, uh, we're attracting all kinds of marine life at the surface. So it's quite fun to uh, just take a look over the edge of Nautilus and see what's swimming by, uh, swimming through our lights. I think it was uh, just a couple nights ago we had a visitor, a special visitor, a mano, a shark, come right alongside, and I didn't get to see it, but many others did. And been noticing some squid and some mahi mahi and some flying fish. Flying fish, so beautiful to be out here on the ocean. Yeah, another fun fact is that uh, uh, depending on where we are in this monument, uh, every now and again, sometimes the closest people to us our astronauts in the International Space oh. Station when it flies over the Pacific. What's well, today? Is this Thursday? Uh, today is yes. Thursday. Yes. Today is Thursday. So tomorrow, tomorrow afternoon, our astronaut friend Laurel O'Hara is going up in the Soyuz. Oh, oh the wow. International Space Station. She's going to be up there for six months. Wow. That's awesome. We're going to have to wave hi uh, yeah. the next time the space station <laughs> comes over. Another fun fact is, uh, you know, we uh, we sail our our friends and our families and the, all our supporters back home, uh, you know, are are holding it down, cheering us on, and uh, the internet wants us to know that the Catalina Fan Club in St. Pete is back in the chat. <laughs> all right, <laughs> so, welcome uh, back, folks. Yes, uh. We know we have parents, we know we have siblings, children, uh, partners, um, significant others. Uh, dear friends, colleagues, all tuning in, and we appreciate you guys being there with us, exploring with us. It means a lot. You're part of the exploration team as well, so. Okay, so we're off on the other side here. Yeah, we're, we're we have the the ridge back, the edge yeah. of it a little close to our back, so I got us to pull this way a little yep. bit. Oh, we're gonna do that. Mm 
Some, uh, some viewers are curious, maybe we've answered this one already, it was from a little while ago, but whether or not the ROV is equipped with a hydrophone. I've heard uh, the ROV is a bit noisy and uh, would, be, would be maybe challenging to get uh, data. We're not sure what we would hear, but Robert, what's... Uh, We'd hear a, a loud roaring sound from the hydraulic motor. <laughs> Ooh, yeah. The hydraulic, we could hear our hydraulic system in the deep sea. That would. That would really upset the internet, so uh, we don't we don't want to do that. Uh, but it is a curious, cur interesting to think about. What would we hear? Yeah. Catalina, where are we in the ship's move right now? So I just got a um, bridge to kind of pull us. We had to kind of go do close to north because we had the ridge right at the R back. Right. So okay. yeah, kind of downslope basically. It's, yeah. Going. I mean, it's kind of complicated. Uh, geography right there. Yeah. yeah. Just gonna make sure Adelanta doesn't bump up against the rocks. Gotcha. Yeah, because we were talking briefly about maybe a rock collection, but I'm not sure this is the best spot for it. So I think yeah, we're gonna I think we're gonna hold off for now. Okay. Because well, we, uh, you're moving we, that way. Yeah. Uh, if we can settle out at the end of this move, that should be a sheltered spot, I would think. Yeah, I, I'm also not seeing a lot of. Well, you can see like the great. current's like mm -hmm. gone away now. Right? Yeah, yeah, I, just now wanna, we got I don't want to collect too close to the ridge edge there. Yeah, agreed. Uh, yeah, it also looks like there's just limited places to sit down around here. So. Well, I could, I can get a rock here, but. Okay. Well, um, yeah, let's let's wait for things to yeah. uh, settle out with the move, and then uh, we'll we'll look at some options. All right, so the yeah. age-old question of this expedition, nudibranch or sea cucumber? Oh, it's a sea cucumber. <laughs> sea cucumber. Yeah. I, I don't trust 99% sure. Like, <laughs> okay, I don't trust myself on my IDs with this. So, <laughs> yeah. so um, Kukui, is, Kukui and I are pretty sure this is a Sinolactida. Okay. Awesome. Mm -hmm. It's uh, pretty cool, actually. It's pretty fun to see these sea cucumbers. That's a big one. I've yeah. seen two or three already on this side of the ridge. It looks like that one's over 30 centimeters. Ooh. Oh, wow. wow. Yeah. That's a unit. <laughs> oh, wow, yeah. That is fantastic. Oh, you can kind of see their guts, too. That's pretty cool. <laughs> it is. It is. Awesome. Well, thank you for that. That's beautiful. Thank you. Wow. Thanks. Awesome. Well, that's fantastic. Thank you for the zoom. That was cool. Beautiful shot. Yeah. See how calm it is over here on this side? Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> so Much easier flying. <laughs> and no more corals. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Let's nice. give the pilots a moment to catch their breath. Sako noted that there's a Xenophyophore that was right by that sea cube. I was wondering if that's what that was. That's cool. Mahalo nuya, Sako. Yeah, thank you. Hey, can we zoom in again? Yeah, sure thing. Oh, cool. Yeah. Yeah, so the Xenophyophore. Um, what are those exactly? Well, it's actually really interesting because um, they're actually unicellular. It's like one 
I that mean, is single cell. Yeah. I mean, yeah. How uh, does that work? That's huge. <laughs> you know, I'm not positive. I just know that they're some of the largest unicellular organisms. That's one of the like. Oh, mini nuclei. One okay. of those facts yeah. that stuck in my head. Um, and yeah, they. Um, oh, that's wild. They're a type of foraminiferin. Um, unsure. Um, but they can create these large structures like that, that have these, like, nodes in them. Um, there's some really giant ones out there as well. They're very cool. Um, I'll do a quick Google to tell you all some more information about them, but... We're gonna get some xenophile oh. whore facts. I am here for it. It says that they, some may extend their cytoplasm beneath the sediment, which I'm guessing is why they're stuck on the substrate. What did you find, Kukri? Um, Schmidt Ocean Institute has a page on them, and it talks about how they extend their cytoplasm beneath the beneath the surface of the sediment. Oh, good point, Osako. Uh, uh, she's reminding us that um, chicken eggs are also single cell. Oh, sure. We just don't tend to think of it. Oh. It's, it's just such a common thing in our lives to see eggs. Oh. Yeah. It's, it's the morphology of this one that is just so fascinating. Like, I would not... I, I, my brain just wouldn't connect single cellular or unicellular organism with a really complex uh, uh, structure like this at the macro scale. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so it's it's pretty interesting. Um, you know, it just uh, I was reading through this uh, Wikipedia page, and uh, it reminded me that okay. they have they have found some of these in pretty high densities. Um, which is which is pretty interesting, and there can be organisms that like they can pr serve as habitat for other organisms, um, which huh. is pretty cool. So they get colonized by other things. Mm -hmm. Wow. And so, I, sorry. Oh, I was just gonna say real quick, Val. Now we we did get out of land to kind of away from there. So up in here, if you see any rocks that you like, I see all sorts of rocks that I like. Yeah. <laughs> Rock o'clock. Rock o'clock. <laughs> So um, yeah, wherever there's a good uh, a good spot to uh, set up for a uh, sample grab, um, All right. yeah, let's do it. So it looks like we have uh, no shortage of options here. Can you remind us what kind of rocks you're looking for, Val? Um, yeah, we're looking for uh, basalts, ideally, but there can be several different rock compositions that we that we bring up. Uh, I'm looking, ideally, for a um, piece of uh, a fragment that would have uh, come off of a, a pillow basalt, which we can identify with a, a very angular and sometimes short, sort of a wedge shape. And normally, we're we're looking for something in the 10 to 15 centimeter range, but, uh, um, you know, that's, uh, you know, uh, that can always be uh, a little bit variable too, depending on just what we're able to pick up off the uh, seafloor as well. Right, and so for anyone who, who um, hasn't been with, uh, hasn't moved around with Hercules, um, the two green dots is a way to tell distance, and they are 10 centimeters that apart. That looks pretty good. There's some other stuff further down that looks all right. Right. Yeah, and with some of these older seamounts too, the manganese crust can kind of glue things to the substrate. So, not everything uh, that looks like it can be grabbable ends up being grabbable. You know, sometimes we end up with smaller or larger rocks too, but those work quite well. You know, we're just trying to balance how much material we need for geochemistry. Uh, can sometimes be a lot, sometimes not much, versus like alteration state of the rock and uh, you know, how thick the manganese crust may be. So we're, we're running on a lot of assumptions here with uh, what we're trying to select. Get on there. Oh, that might be more jumbo than we want. Um, that looks, oh, that, that looks really good. <laughs> oh, wow. 
Are you, are you seeing it because of the orange sort of? Um, uh, the orange the is probably some surface staining, but yeah, I'm, I'm looking at the shape of it mm -hmm. and uh, the angularness is really good. It's a little on the big side, but um, that's definitely something we can work with. I'm, mm -hmm. I'm really happy with that one. Excellent. Beautiful. Yeah, nice grab. Thanks, Robert. All right. Okay, I'm here for Sam. Uh, let me get around the corner here. Okay. Amazing he biology. Some, yeah, he's a brow cam. Incredible get geology. Mm -hmm. All around fantastic. We got to get past dive. this thing without bumping into it. Where'd you go? Yeah, yeah, you're on the side. You okay. just got to go blind. All right. Yeah, we need to switch that camera from the this oh, can view. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Can you roll a drawer out? Yep, here you go. And you so have it looks boxes. like we can get it in a little box, I think. Yeah, you have C and D open for the little boxes. So, uh, what are we at? C and D? Yeah. C and D. <laughs> you might have just nudge it to the... Yeah, it'll go. Yeah. We can make it go. <laughs> <laughs> Let me see if it's all the way out. It doesn't look like it's all the way out. Oh, no, it is all the way out. Yeah, it's just hanging on like a corner or something in there. How angular is too angular? <laughs> oh, maybe. Oh, nice. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well it's done. A big uh, yeah. Uh -oh. You might need a pry bar to get it out. <laughs> we'll, we'll, we'll cross that bridge when we come <laughs> to it. <laughs> well, hopefully the box can close though. Yeah. See? Oh, nice. Oh. Very nice. Beautiful. All right. You're good. Go back in. Awesome collection. Thank you. All right. Ooh, that's a nice still cam angle. It's very dramatic. Hey, Nav. Uh, confirming that was sample 048. Perfect. Thank awesome. you. Awesome. Thank you. Yep. There you go. Come back to dive. Yeah. Is that another xenophyophore that we're seeing near the center of the screen? What are you talking about? Can we zoom in? This? Yeah. Oh, it's... I think... I got to rotate a little bit. To me, that looks like a sponge that may have... Oh, yeah, I think that's a sponge. sponge. That is an interesting looking shape, definitely. Yeah, I do believe that's an old sponge. Yeah. Thanks for the zoom on that. Oh, mushroom coral. Yeah, that's a big mushroom coral. All right. So, which direction are we going? Let's see, I'm gonna... 
So waypoint three is basically up a pretty steep incline from here. Okay. In this direction. Do we yeah. just want to attempt to yeah. go for it? I think that's okay. Let's see how it goes. Sounds like a plan. Bridge now. go two five meters at bearing two seven five. Thank you. Is that a materia sponge? Um yes. It's a very I think interesting so. shaped one. So Virginia, you were asking about the coloration of the rock that we just picked up and how it has that orange kind of on the underside. Yes, I was, I was interested. Yeah, um, so probably some of that is uh, some surface staining, but uh, there may actually be somewhat of a lack of a manganese crust on that portion of the rock because that's been buried in uh, the silt. Whoa. Oh. No. Oh. That looks cool. <laughs> <laughs> hey friend. Yeah, that looks like a morid, morid fish. Um, Wow, I think we saw a couple of those on the the Ludon dive as well. That's wonderful. Can we get are we in a spot where we could get some good I mean we're getting yeah, a great video with this actually, <laughs> so Wow, that's amazing. Can we get the lasers off before Wow. Given us the side eye a little yeah, bit. Yeah, I did. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, what have we here? What is this stranger visiting this place? Mm -hmm. That's amazing. And yeah. I think we Can got an in? ID from um, Steve, um, who says it's a Pacific flat nose Antimora species. Oh, wow. That's fantastic. Thank you, Steve. They have such striking fins. They do, they are beautiful. Mm -hmm. Giving us all angles oh, here. And yeah. Chris says that it is of the species Microlepis. Looking for a friend, it seems. Yeah. You're looking at a Pacific flat nose. I did, thanks to our scientists on shore, Steve and, and Chris, and the science team here in the control van. We're on the sixth dive of the Ala Amwana Kaiuli expedition on an unnamed sea mount, only recently mapped, never, never seen by human eyes, as far as we know. All right. We just made a new friend. Carrying on. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh. Oh wow. Oh. Hi. Oh, We're carrying on. Hi, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> so long, oh. buddy. Bye, buddy. <laughs> Oh, these are interesting striations on the substrate. Yeah, so, so this is that is columnar basalt? That's exactly what it is. Good job. Yeah, nice big <laughs> chunk of, uh, looks like it's in place too, so we may be looking at another uh, dike intrusion here, part of one. And uh, yeah, we're looking at a cross section of it. And what happens is uh, when these intrude into, uh, in, into uh, the rift zone, the uh, surrounding rock, uh, they start cooling at the outsides because that, uh, that rock is much cooler. And then it cools from those margins on inward. And it develops these uh, internal stresses as the rock cr uh, contracts. And uh, those are places where that rock is going to break. 
gives you these nice, uh, on average, hexagonal columns. Uh, hexagon is a, uh, uh, you can tessellate that shape, so it all kind of fits together like a puzzle. I don't even want to say it, but it looks like steps. It does. Yeah. Hmm. You know, this is very similar to uh, Giant's Causeway. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. All those formations are Devil's incredible. Post pile. That too, yeah. Oh yeah, the standing on the rock. Um, yeah, that that kind of indicates that uh, the sample we picked up had been sitting in uh, those sediments for uh, a very, very long time. It looks like there was some manganese uh, incrustation that occurred on the top of the rock, not so much on the bottom, just because it's been buried. Which uh, is an indicator, another indicator to me that uh, um, you know this this uh, uh, this very high energy sort of environment we're seeing here. This this potential collapse is. Uh, this is something that happened a very long time ago, and it hasn't really been super active since. You know, at least th as far as the little drips and drabs of uh, what we can see on our dive track. So we're seeing we're seeing a little bit of geologic history long ago. Some of those old uh, dynamic processes. Give us another jump up slope in this direction. Okay. Bridge now. Can we move two five meters at bearing two seven five? Thank you. Dr. Val, some of uh, some of our viewers online are curious if uh, these intrusive formations, these dikes, these columnar columnar basalts, if they uh, make make the dating process uh, trickier, or if they actually help clarify some of the some of the dating process. Um, that's a really good question. Uh, I mean, they, they can be helpful if uh, oh, more zoanthid oh, wow. or parazoanthid. Oh, oh, yeah. Paragorgia. Yes. Wow. Yeah. Wow. I think this is um, more of that parazoanthid that yeah. we had just seen with the with a star around it. That's amazing. The uh, Bologomas, Bologomazoanthus. That's great. That's beautiful too. Oh, and it's got a squat in it. Wow. Yeah, Chrysa Gorgia, right? Mm -hmm. Kind of looks like. Yeah, it's very interesting branching. Yeah. It's got, it does, it 
it does have multiple planes, uh, Chris. It's so delicate. Mm-hmm. It's full zoom. It is. What's incredible is the uh, squat lobsters, the exact same shade. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes, it is. That's fantastic. Okay, get moving. Okay, yeah, let's get moving. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, there was a uh, question about um, intrusives and the uh, age determination process. Um, it kind of depends um, on like preservation states of the rocks. Like <clears throat> if you have a, like, say a pretty non-porous rock that uh, can resist a lot of seawater infiltration. Um, especially with some of these older rocks that uh, my, my team and I are working on. <clears throat> um, yeah, that could make it a better candidate. Uh, we love it when uh, these rocks have uh, certain uh, uh, minerals that have crystallized out uh, and are uh, part, part of its uh, like matrix. Um, and those can either be uh, intrusive or extrusive. So, uh, uh, but it's also very possible depending on what you pick up, uh, that we could um, sort of bracket in age determinations to get some idea of how long this volcano was active. But, uh, you know, that's, that's, that's difficult to determine exactly because we don't always know what exactly we're picking up until uh, we get it on board. There, there's right. some field evidence that we can see that tells us, uh, yes, these are uh, igneous rocks under all this crust. Um, but, um, you know, it, it can be difficult to tell if you're looking at something from the main phase of uh, uh, the volcano building itself up or uh, like one of the later uh, waning phases of activity. Does that make um, that does that make this the video survey that's that goes along with the rock samples really important for sort of added context on whether these rocks might have come from some of these intrusive you know, intrusion events or if they've you know it, is, is that uh, is that a thing that you that you have to think about pairing these samples to this sort of wider context and landscape from which you're taking them? Uh, yeah, we do a little bit of that. Um, I'm hoping I'm hoping at some point, uh, uh, as uh, you know, our, our imaging and uh, 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 three-dimensional techniques uh, improve over time, that we might be able to uh, link these better to uh, yeah some of the volcanic structures that we see. Cool. But I think that's just kind of getting started with uh, uh, oceanic survey work. Sure. Like uh, one, one of the other dives we did uh, prior to the uh, the archaeology component, um, yeah, I uh, was working on uh, uh, some field descriptions of the rocks in the lab and found that we had, uh, I think it was our first dive on King George, we had uh, three samples that we picked up um, in the first half of the dive, and those were all the same type of uh, basalt. Mm -hmm. Looked very similar to each other, a lot of similar characteristics. And then as we got higher into the later portions of the, the dive, we picked up three more that were an entirely different rock type um, that uh, is uh, apparently prevalent at uh, those higher stratigraphic levels. And it's a little hard to tell what that rock type is because, you know, I, I don't have, um, you know, it, it, uh, doesn't have any phenocrysts, any minerals in it that kind of help constrain that composition. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, not a whole lot of, a, a whole lot of other uh, uh, clear identifying uh, features that would give away its rock type, but um, it has some hints that, you know, it's very possible that could be some sort of later stage of volcanism. And that, and if, if that's true, if that's correct, uh, that could tell us a little bit more about, um, you know, what what the volcano processes looked like late in its lifetime. Okay. So, but it's it's tricky to know for sure in the field, because unfortunately I can't see the isotopes. <laughs> <laughs> Not and yet. We, and we augmented can't do that kind reality, of augmented reality coming soon. Hopefully, yeah. <laughs> yeah, you do little pseudo geologic maps overlaid on uh, some sort of a uh, uh, photogrammetry track or something. But um, yeah, it's it's a couple uh, of cruises back. We had a uh, Raman spectrometer, a NASA Raman spectrometer mounted on the vehicle, and they could, they could oh do yeah, chemical analysis. I remember uh, hearing about that. Yeah, it's a rather large instrument. 
Yeah, because we can't bring a multi collector on board. Um, it, it just unfortunately wouldn't really work on a, on a moving ship. They have to be kept pretty stable. They they're sensitive to vibrations, and like temperature and humidity, and also they're pretty large. So you don't want to move those around. Uh, they're they're a little too expensive for that. But yeah, ten years ago. Um, on, uh, when I was on a dredge cruise on the Ravel, uh, my first ever cruise, um, my PhD advisor and I brought a, uh, a miniature laser-induced breakdown spectroscopy instrument uh, on the ship, and we were able to do some very basic uh, geochemistry with that. So we could take uh, small pieces of rock that we had cut down to, like, you know, a microscope uh, slide size. Um, and I, I would bring those in and uh, uh, stick them in the sample chamber and fire a laser at the ground mass of those rocks. Cool. And the little plasma that's generated from that, uh, that laser shot uh, out of the rock uh, gets uh, picked up by um, the light from that plasma burst uh, gets picked up by these fiber optic cables that take, uh, that, uh, uh, and take that light over to a, uh, a spectrometer and we can uh, pull a little bit of uh, geochemical information out that way. Oh wow! It's it's uh, not super high precision, so it only works for um, elements that we have a lot of. But it, it helped us tell apart um, ultimately, uh, you know, what rocks that we were picking up along to one hot spot versus uh, rocks that um, we picked up along this uh, this uh, uh, cruise plan that belonged to a different hot spot. So it kind of told us some broad differences. Yeah. And uh, th there are probably ways to develop that, uh, that kind of set up a little more with like a better spectrometer, a uh, different kind of laser. But, you know, maybe maybe one day that could get us to some rough isotope values. But again, it's it's not going to be anywhere near as good as uh, what we can get uh, back at the lab. Get in the lab, yeah. So there's potential. It's it's just really difficult to do. But yeah, sometimes uh, scientists will bring on things like yeah, like uh, Raman spectrometers. Uh, uh, gas chromatographs, um, uh, all, any other sorts of uh, these, these smaller uh, 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 analytical instruments. And those can go down directly with Hercules uh, as part of yeah. as, as part of the Herc system. Some some of them can. Some of them we keep up in the lab. A okay. NASA instrument was mounted right on the the aft end of Hercules. It's only like two meters long and oh wow. Geez, uh, I don't know how big around. So I'm always curious how stuff like that works underwater because, uh, you know, we, we often try to operate this, uh, some of these instruments, at least that I use, uh, under vacuum. Yeah. So you're always worried about, like, what's between the detector and what you're trying to sample. Right. Well, well there's I know the laser was quite powerful because they had to be very careful about it being on on deck. Mm -hmm. you know, it, was, it was dangerous. Yeah, so they had a card that they would calibrate the laser on while we get to the bottom. And then there's, I think, depth ranges that worked due to temperature. Um, there's an like, ideal temperature range for it to work. Gotcha. Okay. That was cool. They were getting real-time uh, data on that. But we were that is really cool. We were three or four meters up from uh, what they were sampling. So. Hmm. Yeah, and another challenge too, if you're trying to get geologic information out of that, um, if you tried to use an, a device like that uh, where we're diving right now, you'd get you get a pretty good idea of uh, the composition of the uh, the manganese crusts, but uh, it's it's going to be much harder to get uh, information about the rocks inside those manganese crusts. Yeah, indeed. Yeah, it's one thing to study volcanoes. It's another to study volcanoes that are old. 60 to 120 million years yeah. old. Yeah, Zach, I, I put in a ship move, so we're starting to move that okay. way again. Okay. Yeah, I just notice he's starting to pull this height. Yeah.
this little ledge here looks like another uh, dike intrusion uh, that's uh, stuck around after the host rocket it intruded into is uh, eroded away or foundered or it's been somehow otherwise uh, displaced. So again, we're seeing a little bit of a cross section of uh, this uh, volcanic plumbing system along this part of the seamount. And even if these are slightly, uh, s slightly younger, so to speak, you're, you're talking about still the same major event. So over the course of, say, 100 million years, you're talking about oh, thousands the, the of intrusions? years difference, the intrusion, the intrusion features? Yeah. Um, yeah, current, current estimates of seamount lifetimes are uh, usually somewhere in the order of about 5 million years. Okay. So, um, yeah, that would all be considered as part of that. Uh, Part of part of that uh, uh, range. Yeah. Yeah. So it's 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 hard to say for sure if you know these are related to like the the main stage of volcanic building or if they're uh, you know one part of one of the end, stage. end stages or, yeah. or somewhere in between. Um, yeah, we we in order to characterize that properly, we'd have to have a lot of samples uh, mm -hmm. from uh, numerous parts of the seamount, but um, uh, that's that's not something that's feasible with ROV and. Uh, yeah, uh, of course. You, you could do it with the uh, with dredging, but we zoom um, in. even then, it's still a little complicated because there you don't have uh, good stratigraphic control, and you're kind of kind of grab bagging a little yeah, bit. And, yeah, uh, yeah. Uh, Luck of the draw. Yeah, another senolactic sea cucumber. And that can be a little tricky to do right because you know there's only so much funding you have to work on so many samples too yeah and it's expensive work so assuming you had you know unlimited funding and a capacity for processing samples in the lab and you and you knew that you could get rocks from all the different uh, periods of, of formation uh, of a volcano would the is the analysis so precise with the isotopes that you would be able to sort of really see the delineation and, and correspond those uh, you know, different features to different different moments, specific different moments in formation. Yeah, we could we could probably figure out a fair chunk of that. Um, there's there's been a lot of work done on the Hawaiian Islands, and uh, 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 that has uh, uh, established, um, at least for some of the some of the volcanoes and islands, uh, pretty clear transitions between uh, uh, different volcanic phases that have built up uh, those those platforms in the islands. Uh, there's some other there's some other uh, parts where we're still trying to figure that out because not all of the volcanoes uh, uh, that make up these islands behave exactly the same way. Right. Yeah, there, there's always like questions about you know, we're looking at like post shield or rejuvenated stage volcanism. Uh, 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 you know what, what does that transition look like from uh, uh, volcano to volcano? Are there some stages that might even be missing in some of these? Yep. You know, what about some of these uh, smaller volcanoes like uh, Mahukona, uh, uh, you know, uh, that are relatively small and may not have had uh, uh, an entire uh, uh, an entire sequence like some of the bigger volcanoes have. You know, there's, there's all sorts of questions about that. So you can get a pretty good idea, but even with really well-studied well places like Hawaii, sometimes we still don't have all the answers. Right. But, you know, we're... we're uh, we, we have a general idea of what those patterns look like. Yeah. And then, you know, there's some other hotspot tracks, too, that have some different um, dynamics than uh, uh, Hawaii. Actually, many, most of them actually do. Hawaii's a little bit of an outlier in a lot of okay. ways uh, as far as plumes go. And uh, they have slightly different volcanic stages that are defined a little bit differently, and that has to do with things like, you know, melt flux and uh, uh, melting at, at uh, source buoyancy. Um, and you know, just the amount of melt supply that's available. Yeah. And so, yeah. They they construct slightly differently, and they and the the progression into that uh, from the main phase to the later phases of volcanism are just a little bit different. Chemistry is a little different. So yeah. you, you kind of have to understand, uh, you know, what kind of uh, uh, style of of uh, intraplate uh, volcanic evolution you're looking at too, yeah. in order to yeah. kind of put that in context. And sometimes there are some volcanoes that are a little trickier too, like uh, Louisville-style volcanism. Um, that's that's uh, that plume has a very different compositional range than what the Hawaiian one does. It's a little bit more, uh, 
like monotonous. It's only seeming to sample one, maybe two different kinds of mantle. So um, it can be a little bit more difficult to uh, track those geochemical changes that can happen over time in uh, that style of volcanism too, at least for that plume. So um, yeah, there are all sorts of factors that have to kind of go into that um, so in order complex. to understand what you're looking at it. The yeah. making of this planet so complex, lots of things to learn. It really is, and that's just mantle plumes. You know, there, there, <laughs> there are uh, multiple other ways to uh, to build a volcano. <laughs> There's a lot of ways to make a planet. It's just that's uh, yeah. you know the intraplate ones, the plume derived stuff is uh, sort of what I specialize in. Yeah. Although I'm also sort of a generalist because I work on uh, uh, some of these uh, uh, systems throughout the Pacific and. Uh, Probably someday I'll uh, stick my toe in the Atlantic. Oh uh, boy. Yeah. <laughs> That's awesome. It's, yeah, they're, they're everywhere. Oh. Thank you, Val. Thank You're you welcome. for that. Yeah, it's Jut Natus. Yeah, the Cretaceous was a very busy time for volcanoes in the ocean. We had a lot of uh, very large volcanic activity right, roughly so around 120 million years ago. I think, we, I think we still see the consequences of some of that activity today. Just Pretty not as voluminous. Right yeah, it's really steep. This is very steep, yeah. Dang. I guess these contour lines on that, that we're seeing in high pack are pretty close together, so. Yeah, it's pretty tight. It's overhangy tight. Yeah. <laughs> so how many floors does this elevator go up? <laughs> so far, uh, <laughs> we're at 35 meters. Wow. Getting back in the coral land. Yeah, mm -hmm. definitely. Yeah, so it seems like some of these cliff faces are uh, potentially some really critical habitats for deep ocean life. Yeah, it can be. You know, one thing I noticed as we moved around that ridge is the amount of sediment that was accumulating on top of some of these surfaces. Um, it wasn't getting swept away, and so that can be um, that can be a pretty a difficult thing for a lot of these corals to deal with. Um, the, the sand and sediment. Is that a big overhang on building. Yeah. Put the mic closer to your mouth, please. Um, <laughs> so yeah, it, it is really important to get away from the sediment, but also, you know, still be able to get um, your food source. So having the sediment being swept away by currents, especially variable um, sort of currents, can be really useful for these corals. And so you'll see them often on, on un underhangs or overhangs or like this. Mm -hmm. Um, as well as in these areas where the currents are really moving through. Um, it's pretty amazing. So we've, we've definitely it got is. some um, aritogorgias. Uh, we've seen several corallids and primnoids. Looks like another crinoid. <clears throat> yeah, that looks like that primnoid that they saw earlier that looked like a... I'm sorry? Sort the it's sort of like yellow to gray from Noah here in the bottom that um, I think it was oh. oh sorry I didn't realize how far away it was. Yes. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> I got too excited. I didn't notice where my mic was. Um. <laughs> we want to hear you, Virginia. <sighs> oh, yeah, well, we've got some really interesting, uh, it looks like even some Rodana Ritogorgias and Chrysogorgids and maybe another Ferraid or Euplectelid sponge. And um, I think that bottle brush Chrysogorgia I feel like it's Chrysogorgia geniculata um, and another Ritogorgia. I love those spirals on the Ritogorgia. Yes, those yeah. spirals are so beautiful and amazing. And we've got that 
Oh, we're almost looking down the spiral. <laughs> wow. Oh, and look at a, a primnoid creeping in too. Amazing. This is amazing. Mm -hmm. And the still cam's got a slightly different shot, so I can see that there's a paragorgid just out of view. Oh no, you can see it here now, I think. Amazing. Um, and that looks like a true anthemastis, mushroom coral. Oh, and these are, un this looks like maybe an unbranched primnoid that maybe we haven't seen. There's one here and one here. Um, huh. if, if we're in a spot where we could get a quick zoom on either of those, that'd be great. Can you zoom in? For those at home, we have a really cool screen that our science team can point things out to the ROV pilots. I don't think you can see those uh, marks on on your cameras at home, but it, it helps us it's identify like, what we're looking at. Like you at. see with a football game, you can... <laughs> That's right. <laughs> yeah. it's, a, it's the in-game in analysis. Same yeah. tool. There yep. you go. This is... Uh, yeah, I don't think we usually put that one uh No, it doesn't out. go out. Sometimes it goes down to the uh, Maybe one of these days the we'll have uh, let people uh, ashore use a uh, telecaster. And yeah. Oh, yeah. Be able to circle things. Oh, that's interesting. The polyps seem to be in multiple directions, not just up or down on this unbranched primnoid. Is it unusual for them to be facing? They're usually just uh, kind of opposite of each other. Oh, uh, yes. Yeah, and actually, and the direction of the polyps can be important. Um, so, but uh, uh, Chris Kelly mentioned that the polyps are long. So, thinking a uh, candidellid uh, gigantia. Mm -hmm. Excellent. You should probably keep climbing here. Just okay, so. great. Okay, yeah. Watch That's awesome. I think we've Atlanta. gotten what we... Yeah, let's move. Right. Going wide. So amazing to be in the control van with this team. I, I didn't even uh, know about many of these species before uh, before this expedition, and now thanks to thanks to Virginia yeah, and Kukui and our team on shore, learning so many new names, mm -hmm. making so many new friends. Mm -hmm. Some of the most beautiful creatures I've ever seen. Yeah, and uh, on the substrate here, uh, you, can, um, you can see some more or less vertical striations, which are giving uh, some current paleo indicators. So we're probably heading into a little bit of a current, or it's been, or it moves down over this. Uh, not entirely sure. But oh, that's wow. that's another direction change based on the substrate that we've seen. Mm -hmm. This is a, a very dynamic place to fly around. It is pretty amazing to be seeing. I love the sonar image. It's just a straight wall. Right <laughs> yeah. Now. This is pretty awesome. <laughs> yeah, we're right, making our way up toward a uh, revised waypoint three of this dive. Oh, and there's I'm a trying to stay outside. out of the worst of the current here. If this were at 19 meters or, tw or 20 meters instead of uh, 1900 or 2000, this would be an epic uh, dive site. This would be world mm -hmm. world class to it be, would uh, be being able to poke along this kind of a wall. Yeah, and you can see uh, just how sheer that face is with the uh, Atalanta cam, looking at Hercules as well as our... <laughs> wow, Atlanta look cam. at that. Which is uh, channel two for our viewers. Yeah, and channel three for the other view. Ah, gotcha. Wow, this is pretty amazing. You've been logging? What's that? You've been logging? <laughs> <laughs> I hope you're there. I'll log one though. 
You going up or are you staying right here for a second? Uh, I'll take care of it. Okay. You can do the log. Yeah. 